Uh, 30 minutes past eight. Uh, good morning to you. Boris Johnson says it's highly likely coronavirus will continue to spread around the UK, but the government says it has a plan to tackle the outbreak. We're talking to the health secretary about that uh, about 45 minutes ago. Emergency measures that will, which will be announced in full later, include bringing retired doctors and nurses back into the NHS, relaxing the rules around staff to pupil ratios to allow for staff sickness. If necessary, uh, giving people the option to work from home and the establishment of a war room in the Cabinet Office, bringing together scientists and other experts. Well, to get a sense of how that might work, at what we can do, everything you want to know about coronavirus, stay with us. We've got the BBC's medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh. Morning to you. Morning. Uh, Michelle Pietney, a senior advisor at ACAS, who can talk to you about implications for work. Morning. And Professor Morning. Tom Solomon, who is director of the UK's Health Protection Research Unit in Emerging Infections at the University of Liverpool. I think I'm going to start with you, Tom, first of all, because we've talked to you um, throughout the last few weeks or so. Where are we right now? We've seen the number of cases go up and obviously, you know, that, what, what, what's your assessment? I think in the UK we are more or less where we expected to be. We've had a small number of cases and that's continued to grow slowly. And we've had some onward transmission now from some of these cases, but that's been picked up very quickly. And we've had, we've continued to have more imported cases. The last three were from Italy. So I think we're more or less where we would expect to be with this kind of outbreak. Fergus, in terms of sort of comparing this, can you contextualise it for us? Where does this compare with other virus outbreaks that we've seen? So I've covered a, a lot of um, outbreaks over the years. Um, H5N1 bird flu actually had a, a vaccine. Against, I'm, I'm vaccinated against bird flu. Um, uh, Ebola, SARS, and the one that we're all familiar with here, H1N1 swine flu, which was a pandemic, uh, and that strain of flu is now one of the strains of flu which is circulating. And this has greater potential than all of them to cause major impact on all of us, on our health, on the NHS, on the economy. Now, we've seen what it's done in China, in Ube province, we've seen what it's doing in parts of Italy. Um, but I use the word potential because uh, we're not there yet, but it looks like we're heading for some kind of major outbreak in the UK. That seems likely. And the longer we can delay that, the better for the NHS. But if there is a major outbreak here, then I would expect to see a lot of pressure on intensive care beds because the minority of people who, are, who get very sick um, need oxygen and they take a lot of time to recover. Um, and that would have a knock-on impact on non-urgent operations. So that's why we're seeing all those measures being announced today in case that happens. Um, can we talk about um, just the, the word, the different? because it's about language as well, isn't it? So pandemic, when might it be declared a pandemic? And what's going on in Wuhan? Because we, we talk about how many people have infected, how many people have died, but not necessarily how many people have recovered as well. Exactly. So um, first of all, in terms of recovery, at the moment it looks like the, the death rate is sadly around 1%. Um, yeah. But of course... That means that 99% of people have recovered. So it's not like the, the other 99% are still in hospital or are still unwell. They have recovered, and 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 that's a, you know that's a more positive thing. Mm. The term pandemic means that we have a, an epidemic in many countries which is severe and which we are not containing. So it, it's just a word which describes the, the state we're at. I think uh, actually declaring it a pandemic would not make a big difference to what we need to do. And we're, we're doing many of those measures in this country and in other countries around the world. The situation in, in Wuhan is interesting mm. um, because the reports uh, seem to change almost daily about where they're up to there. Certainly, we don't seem to be having the, the, the massive growth that we had to begin with in terms of number of cases. Numbers seem to be coming down a little bit, or at least the growth was controlled. To begin with, we weren't sure whether that was just due to lack of availability of testing. And obviously, if you're not testing people, yeah. they're not positive. But it, it does seem that the numbers overall are not growing in the way that they were. And that's probably a reflection of the containment me measures which they've used, which have, have had an impact. And the question in this country will be, to what extent are we going to use containment measures 
And when are we going to introduce them? Clearly, at this stage, we've had 39 patients out of a population of 65 million. It wouldn't be appropriate to do the massive social distancing measures. And what we expect is that it would be proportionate, depending on where we're up to in the outbreak. Okay. And I think what the, the health secretary was talking about was that sort of element of personal responsibility, which lots of people, Michelle, are asking about work and about mm -hmm. school and things like that. Let me ask you some of these questions that have come in. Paul says... In the event of a national lockdown, who will refund my travel pass that I can't use? And who will pay the loss of my wages? I know these are very personal issues. And also, Sonny says, in the event of a, a nationwide lockdown to contain the spread, would the government pay those that are at home um, a regular universal income to cover the shortfall? And these are all things that the, the government are discussing at the moment, aren't they? Absolutely. And it's obviously something money is going to be of a major concern to so many people. Who refunds the National Rail Pass? That would probably be a, a question for um, whoever it is that controls the rail network. Um, in terms of employers, what we're encouraging is that as much as possible, employers um, provide hand sanitizers and staff employees should wash their hands as often as possible, as I think you've talked an awful lot about. <laughs> and chief hand yeah. washer. Yeah. <laughs> the flag carrier for hand washing. But also um, that people use tissues mm. and that there are um, adequate facilities for getting rid of used tissues and they're not left lying around. It might also be that people would want to think about perhaps cleaning keyboards um, and possibly, if you haven't got your own headset, making sure that telephones are kept clean and, if possible, just use your own. Um, just um, going back to what the health secretary was saying, um, he says, if you self-isolate for medical reasons to keep others safe, then that counts as being sick for sick pay purposes. Right. Oh. Yes, okay. he, yeah, he told yeah, he that on BBC Breakfast. <laughs> I was, I was about breaking news okay. this morning, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it, is that clear? Does that apply to everybody? Okay, there are different sets of circumstances yes. um, why people might be off work. The first one is that they are actually ill and diagnosed by a medical expert, in which case it's like any other time that you're sick, mm. irrespective of the illness that you've got. You might um, be told to go home by your employer mm. because perhaps you work with vulnerable people, older people or people with diabetes or heart problems, in which case, generally speaking, if your employer sends you home, yeah. then you should be paid as normal. The third option could be that you are told that you were in that you should be quarantined. You're right. And until you just said, then quarantine, from what I can gather and from what we've been told, was not treated as sickness and you may not qualify for SSP. I haven't heard... Um, the comments yet, so yeah. I, you're giving well, me news. Well, well, I mean, you know, this is it is changing all the time, isn't absolutely, it? Um, and that's what's important. Um, just really quickly on um, sort of again, you know, that you know, the flag bearer for hand washing, etc. <laughs> um, let's also talk about um, other sort of measures. But they're talking on there about you know perhaps changes in schools and if there yeah. are staff shortages. I mean, presumably, if you get sort of more than thirty children in a classroom size, then that also becomes problematic. Yeah, but if teachers are off sick. That's what you've got to do. You've got to do something with the kids. Yeah. But on the whole social distancing thing, it was interesting to hear um, yeah. Matt Hancock saying hand no strong evidence that you can pass on germs with handshakes. I would say, I, I would dispute that. <laughs> Study in um, the United States in 2008 said that um, on average we all carry 150 different species of bacteria on our hands. Now, that's just bacteria let alone viruses. Um, now, we're talking about if we get a major outbreak, mm. as we're sort of eliding potentially towards a major outbreak, France and Germany have got double the number of cases that we have. So it looks like it's coming here. If it comes here in numbers, then we might want to think about not shaking hands. The French have advised people not to kiss on each other's cheeks, so careful who you kiss. Um, and in a major I am way, normally <laughs> careful. <laughs> I think it's advice we should all live by. And, and it may, maybe, you know, a, a little bit of social distancing yeah. is useful. I'm going to put this question to you as well. Um, Sarah says, how long is the virus likely to go on for? Will it affect holidays abroad, for example, to July and August? You know, mm. it's already having an impact on people's holidays, isn't it? It, it is having an impact, and I think a lot of people are deciding not to travel 
uh, not really based on the medical advice or the government's advice, but just because they're anxious about travelling to yeah. other parts of the world. Quite a few flights have been cancelled because well, they're not being taken up. Already, yeah, and I've, I've got friends, I've got colleagues actually who've talked about cancelling meetings that we're, we're due to have. And I've said, well, no, we should continue with the current plan, but we can revise as we get closer to the dates. But I think... Um, uh, yeah, I, th I think it, as, as the summer progresses, we're going yeah. to see usually for these types of viruses, for all respiratory viruses, the, the incidence drops as we get into the spring and the summer. So the hope in this country is that we can keep this contained, even if the numbers do grow, that they don't grow so enormously. And then as we get to the spring and summer, there, there'll be a natural drop off. But the likelihood is that this virus, even if it dies off a little bit during the summer, it is going to be around and we may well have a second wave later in the year. Fergus, can I put a point to you, which I'm sure many have asked you as well. Uh, there are, you know, lots of people watching this this morning who are genuinely worried about um, their work, about their family, about what might happen in the coming weeks. And there are some watching this thinking, this is no different to normal flu and more people will die of flu than will die from coronavirus. What makes this different? How do you answer that, okay. that, so that point? It, what makes this different is it, nobody on the planet, unless you've already caught it, has got immunity to the coronavirus. That's number one. It's only been around a couple of months. So all these death rates of 1%, they are really guesstimates, and potentially they have a margin of error of 4 So it could be down to a you know, quarter of 1% or less, which will put it on a par with um, some pandemic flus we've had in the 50s and 60s. Um, but it could be higher than that. I mean, I, I, I would guide you against much higher than, than 1% because there is a tendency as um, viruses spread universally for them to lose a bit of their potency. So hopefully we're, we're not in for the sort of scenes that we, we saw in, in Wuhan. But it, it is serious. It has serious potential, but... So does seasonal flu. That's the number one viral threat in the UK at the moment. And on average, their estimates are that in the last five years, seasonal flu has caused about 17,000 deaths in England alone. And globally, um, seasonal flu kills half a million people roughly each year. Um, that really puts things into perspective, mm. doesn't it? Michelle, just one last question, I think, really. Um, so if somebody's feeling ill, and, you know, it could be just a normal cold or whatever it is, what do, what do they do? If they're meant to be going into work, do you call in? What should you be doing? You would do whatever you would normally do yeah. if you were ill. Yeah. So I wake up and, um, I don't know, I've got terrible back pain yeah. and I can't go into work, I would do what I normally do, which yeah. is ring into work and say, I don't feel very well. Yeah. And under those circumstances, of course, it's it's uh, a period of sickness there. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't soldier on. I think that's the advice yeah. now. If you've got a respiratory illness, don't, don't come in and, you know, put a break protect yourself and others. And the other important thing is actually the, the, the 111 phone line is yeah. being a little bit overwhelmed. What well, the first thing people should do is look online and search for NHS 111 coronavirus and there's a very clear plan there that tells you exactly at what stage you should phone the number and whether you need to or not. Excellent. Thank you all very much indeed. You can nice find out more, <laughs> as you said, about the symptoms of coronavirus and how to protect yourself against it on our website as well, bbc.co.uk slash news, also on the BBC News app. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, right now it's time to I get did. some news. I just said, yeah, I've made mental notes. Uh, news, travel and weather, wherever you're watching, we'll see you in a moment. Yeah.